Okay, we'll get started. We've only got the, what, what, what have we got? 28 minutes um, of this half hour session left. So we are going to go straight into it. Welcome everyone, everyone who's joined. Thank, hello members and thank you for joining. So this is a PPMA webinar. And throughout this autumn, we have been hosting a series of webinars with some of our shortlisted entries from this year's PPMA Excellence in People Management Awards. And this afternoon, we are very privileged to have Buckinghamshire County Council uh, with us today and colleagues. Um, and I will allow them to get started in sharing with all of us uh, their entry for Best Candidate Experience. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Sarah, Emma and Lorna, who are going to take us through the presentation uh, and allow us some time for questions at the end, if we've got some time, um, and uh, just allow us to uh, immerse ourselves in their experience. So, Sarah, if I hand over to you and you can thank introduce you. your colleagues and we can get straight into it. Hello everyone, it's really lovely to be here. I can see, it's very nice to see some familiar faces from Buckinghamshire that have joined us as well. So um, I've got my colleagues Lorna and Emma who've been really involved in the work we're going to be talking about, but there are other colleagues who may like to answer some of the questions as well, should we get to that point. So I will take, it, take advantage of them. Um, just by way of quick introduction, um, I'm Sarah Keyes, I'm the service director that uh, looks after HR and OD, um, and we're going to be talking to you about delivering a great candidate experience. Um, before I kind of launch into the slides, there's just a couple of things I wanted to say by way of introduction. Um, my team have heard me talk about this till they're probably sick to the back teeth of it, but my approach in terms of um, HR generally, and it's stolen with pride from a from a um, a book called Disruptive HR, um, is to really focus on uh, the people that we work with as humans, customers, and adults. And hopefully, you'll see that philosophical approach sort of weave its way through what I'm gonna what I'm gonna be talking to you about. Um, so just by way of context, in terms of Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire is a big unitary authority. It's the second largest unitary um, in the UK. We have 147 elected members um, and a budget of around a billion pounds. Um, our workforce is around four and a half thousand pounds plus four and a half thousand pounds, four and a half thousand people, and we have a and we have a, a, a much bigger um, schools uh, population that we also support from our HR team. Um, in terms of our employment context, the average salary in Buckinghamshire is around thirty-two and a half thousand pounds. Um, we have about four and a half, five and a half thousand employee employers with active jobs. So it's a really competitive market in terms of candidates. Um, on average, um, thirty-one applications for a job. So we have a we. We work with a partner um, in terms of our temporary recruitment and they define us as a high competitive area. So the yeah. number of jobs that we have and compared with the number of, number of applicants makes it a really, really challenging environment. This month, there were close to 30,000 live jobs um, in Buckinghamshire. So the context is really, um, is really far reaching. So you can see from the environment that actually delivering a great candidate experience has, has been really important and will continue to be really important to us. So moving on to the next slide, I just wanted to whiz through some, we're gonna just talk about some examples that we've got where we think the candidate experience is a really good one. Um, and so the areas we're gonna look at are homes for Ukraine, um, care leavers, um, our, try, our try before you apply approach, how we focus assessment centres in some hard to fill areas which are really strongly um, focused on our candidate experience. And then our most recent work working with um, our, the local prison service in, in um, Buckinghamshire. So if we start off with the um, homes, homes for Ukraine experience. So Buckinghamshire from the very onset of uh, the war in Ukraine have been really committed in terms of welcoming guests um, into Buckinghamshire. So um, when I last when I last checked um, the when I last checked the data, we had close to around 2,000 
2,000 guests currently um, in, the, in the Buckinghamshire area. And what, one of the things that was really important to the council was actually we started to work and help um, our Ukrainian guests access employment in our local area. So um, the Buckinghamshire team um, spent uh, quite a considerable time developing um, information events um, working with teams across the working with teams across the council to run regular employability sessions. Um, one of the things that, and I'm really thrilled she's on the she's actually on the call as well. One of the really um, fantastic things that we've been able to do is um, to recruit a lady from um, from the Ukraine who um, works very closely with our head of resourcing to to deliver um, the most fantastic employability sessions in the community. Um, we are attending uh, Ukrainian support community groups. We've got a 12-month programme of events so that we're really reaching out into the community um, to talk about the sort of um, employment opportunities the council can provide. We also guarantee um, an interview um, for, for, for individuals who meet our essential criteria. So that's a kind of broad brush outline of, of the sort of things that... Um, the things that we started to um, play play into. Um, what did that mean, and what were the out what were the outcomes? We have an incredible collaborative working relationship across the council with our um, with our partner Pertemps, who provide our temporary and agency staff, um, and with local partners supporting Ukrainian refugees. Um, we've had some real success in terms of. Um, uh, uh, employing Ukrainian refugees, and Svetlana is a um, is our very own HR um, uh, person who is making a fantastic contribution to this to this program. Um, we also um, one of the things that um, that has been a kind of not an unintended consequence, but a really brilliant consequence of the program is that actually um, host families who are hosting our Ukrainian guests. Have got a really positive perception of the council and the services we offer our residents as a result of the support that we put in place um, to help them help help the individuals that are that are staying with them. So that's kind of if I move on to the next slide, we've got some just some rather boring words. We've got some really uh, nice shots and nice um, uh, quotes of the sort of things that we're doing. So you can see people attending sessions, queues outside waiting to waiting to come in. So. Um, regular events, 12-month programs, obviously um, making sure that uh, we're using language that people can people can understand and work with, employment um, workshops running at different times of the, the day and different days of the week. So that's the kind of Ukrainian example. Um, then um, uh, the next one I'd quite like to talk about is care leavers. So um, we have... Um, in common with, with most people, our care leavers team. And our care leavers team is working with around, just, just shy of around 300 young people who are leaving the care, who are leaving our care system. Um, one of the things that we, um, we, we have been working with in partnership with our leaving care team is how we can support young people moving into, um, moving into, the, into, the, work, into the workplace. One of the key things for us about understanding the need and understanding um, uh, what we could do to respond to that was to look at our data. So um, our resourcing team were able to um, uh, do some analysis, which helped us understand that there were over 400 applicants who were indicating that they were care leavers when applying for roles with the council. So as a result of that, we've developed, again, uh, we call them employability workshops targeted at young people, um, where they have the opportunity to work with members of members of the HROD team to look at um, CV writing, how to, how to manoeuvre your way around some of the complexities of um, application form filling, um, how to, you know, how to um, do some of the things that many of us will take for granted, which are in respect of searching for jobs, building and developing interview skills, understanding the sorts of things that employers are looking for when you when you get an interview. Much of the support that that we did in those um, workshops was on a one to one pace or on a one to one um, basis, coaching young people through 
um, through um, the skills that they need to, to have a successful interview outcome. Um, outcomes are really important. Um, we, we have eight we have eight young people currently in employment with the council that are care leavers. We have a care leaver within our own team who's doing incredibly well. Um, feedback both from our managers and also from, um, from young people leaving care, incredibly positive in terms of the support to level that playing field for them to be able to make successful applications. We've got some, uh, again, the next slide, just shows that we've got some photos um, of some of the sessions that we that we that we've been running, and just some of the feedback um, from people that have attended have attended the sessions in terms of making the whole job of applying for a job just a bit more accessible and a bit bit more easy to understand. And of course, food is everything. So we've got some really nice positive comments about um, some of the some of the things that we were able to do. So this is a really um, is something that the team feel really passionately about. Um, the next develops in next developments that we that we that we have in mind in terms of our approach to this are we'll very shortly be, be signing the leading care covenant. We'll we'll be introducing a, a special contact point. Um, we will guarantee interviews and and the most recent discussion at our corporate management team was around. Um, ensuring that um, we guarantee uh, apprenticeships for young people leaving care that are coming into work with the council. So some really positive, um, both at a candidate stage, but then taking it taking it forward into employment. Uh, conscious of the time, because I can talk for England. Um, try before you try before you apply. Um, in common with most of us, um, social work recruitment is incredibly difficult, incredible, incredibly challenging to. Um, to reach out to candidates, but also to be able to um, uh, translate the applications into new starters. So we've been running a try before you buy, a, a try before you buy, a try before you apply, so that so that potential applicants can come and meet the team, come and meet team members, uh, come and meet uh, team managers. To get a really good understanding of what it what it would be like to work in Buckinghamshire Council, so we run these as a um, we run these as open sessions where people can come and hear and talk. We we both run them in person and online. Um, what we've noticed with um, uh, undertaking this is that we get a um, an improvement, an increased ratio of applications to new starters. Um, we get quicker and faster onboarding, because some of the questions that you have when you're starting a new organisation are already answered. Um, and um, a better sense of belonging and understanding of, of the role that people come into. So in general, there's kind of, it's a win-win. You kind of get work out that whether you want to come here. So there's savings for managers in terms of candidates have that experience and make the decision before they place an application. And at the same time, um, we get, um, a bigger number of people that decide to apply because they've seen what it's like. Moving on, um, no, it's just an example of the, some of the feedback and comments in terms of it, it's not just social worker, we use it in our occupational therapy world um, and also for our social work assistants. So it's a really great way to get people to really get that insight, insider information about what it's like and, and to be really open and transparent with that. Um, so moving on, um, Another one of ours, you'll notice a lot of these are in hard, a lot of these are starting to address areas that are hard to fill. Um, candidate focused assessment centres are absolutely, um, have, have been transformational in terms of the way our customer service um, centre, contact centre um, starts to fill its role. So very diverse, very challenging roles, high, pr high pressure, need a huge amount of knowledge in terms of being able to respond to queries that we get we get from residents. Um, so Emma and the team have introduced a candidate focused um, assessment day working in partnership with our with our customer service center where we um, we really take um, up the recruitment activity at upper level where we start to focus on transferable skills, the strengths that people bring um, into, could potentially bring into Buckinghamshire. A bit like the tribe before you apply, um, there's the opportunity to um, 
meet the team, understand what a day in the life is like. Um, we've also taken the opportunity to allow candidates to listen into live calls so they really get a feel for the um the day-to-day -day experience of, of working in the contact center we've also um made the interview experience incredibly less formal so that individuals are not daunted by the experience or the hurdles that they that, that they feel that they might need to get over to actually come and work for us so that sort of sense of this is what I'm going to be doing. This is what it's going to feel like. This is what my team is going to be like has made a made a huge difference. So like the previous descriptions, we we've got um, we've been able to fast track um, the whole recruitment process. So it's quicker to get people on board. You also have people that will come along to these sessions and actually self select themselves out that actually this isn't for me. It isn't what I thought it was going to be. And that can save a huge amount of time in terms of, um, you know, kind of people starting and then realizing it's it's not for them so that you end up you know, sliding back down the back down the to the beginning of the of the game again um so good point really positive um really positive candidate uh, experience and and better retention uh, rates are the kind of key indicators that we're seeing from this here's some of their comments it's, it's around um Bucky, one of the things that people say about working in Buckinghamshire is that people are really great. So actually using our people as our best selling point is, is really starting to um, really reap benefits in terms of our um, candidate experience. So there's just a few comments there for you to have a look at. And then I think I'm moving on to the final, our final example. And this is one that is very new and um, uh, is just has, has, um, in the, the um, spirit of full disclosure, has been a lot of work for the team in terms of the amount of um, work we've we've done with the prison service um, in terms of working with prisoners to encourage them to think about their future careers. Um, to, uh, members of the team have been into our local prisons, working with them, looking at CV writing, interview skills, and the sort of target jobs where we absolutely are confident we can provide the wraparound support that people uh, leaving prison need to be successful in the workplace. Um, so working, um, uh, we've, we've talked them through what it's like coming back, into, coming back into the workplace, what they can expect. We've also taken managers from the services that, that have roles that we feel um, would be a really good place to start um, into, those, into those settings. Amazingly, we've had um, five um, prisoners who have been released on licence who've started work in the last month. Um, two started yesterday. What we've been able to do, which are one of the most encouraging things about this, is actually um, fill roles that are very hard to fill in Buckinghamshire. So one of the managers um, uh, fed back to our team yesterday that for the first time, for as long as he can remember, he's got a full workforce. Um, so this is a this is a really encouraging and um, you know whether the whether candidate experience we we have some feedback from these from these candidates but the outcomes of both the council and our residents has been incredibly positive so this is a this is a really it's it's starting to bear fruition which um, at the time of our application we probably wouldn't have known um, so just by way of summary and I've spoken for ten minutes. Um, uh, we're really proud of our new initiatives. We're really proud of the difference it makes in terms of um, perception of the council, how our residents see and see and um, understand the working opportunities that we can we can provide. But we've been able to match really hard to fill roles with um, individuals that may find it hard to access the workplace. So it kind of feels like it's a bit of a win-win. Um, and on that note, I will stop and um, hand back to Pam. I was on mute. Sorry about that, Sarah, for that little pause. All right. no worries. <laughs> typical, no worries. Typical, typical. Wow, you packed so much into those Sorry. 10 minutes. I'm oh, I, so <laughs> I was really, really surprised about how much ground you covered. And it is really, really comprehensive. And feels like it's got this thread of like social value impact in your uh, community, not just for the organization. So that social value piece, which is what local government's all about, isn't it? 
is really, um, you know, it's that golden thread for all of the activities and initiatives um, that you've uh, described. Uh, so I thought it was absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. And I think it is very worthy of the win uh, for your PPMA award, uh, because I think you've just touched and covered all corners um, there in terms of the candidate experience. Uh, personally, I was really, really um, interested in that employability skills thing that you were doing with your care leavers. We're doing something similar uh, in Essex, but I think you really captured the essence of the importance of that employability um, skills piece. Just want to share a little bit more uh, around that. I might bring Emma in, who will hate me for bringing her in, but I think if, if I could just say one, the one thing I would say is the team, my resourcing team, are so passionate about this work. Their passion overflows into the, the ideas, the areas that they want to work in is, is driven from their from their passion and enthusiasm. Their passion and enthusiasm. I think it's um, trying to. Um, everybody wants to be part of those workshops when we're working with young people because it really can, sometimes in a back office when you're working in the HR function, you sometimes feel a little bit removed from the services that we deliver more broadly as a council and I think I, I mean Emma and Lorna you can speak you can speak for yourselves but I think that is really has been really has been really positive in terms of that experience but it's about it's using the skills that we do really well as HR professionals coaching facilitation encouraging explaining some of the opaqueness around the systems that we know we have the processes that we have um and it's, it helps us in terms of our process improvement journey. So the work that we're doing in Buckinghamshire about simplifying the way we do stuff, when you get a young a young care leaver challenging you on, well, why on earth would you need to do that? It, sometimes you go, hmm, why would we? I don't <laughs> know, Lorna, I don't know, Emma, whether you wanted to add anything. I'm happy if you, um, if you I can see Emma's on mute, but, uh, oh, she's coming in. They're both coming in. Emma, no, just do you want to just add anything? anything? Just echo what you said, really, and it's just about really building the confidence and actually looking at transferable skills and really promoting that actually taking a little bit of a different stance. You can do that. You do that in your social life. You do that at college and really just building some confidence, but also, more importantly, making it really good fun for them. Mm -hmm. No, no, really wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's so important because you don't know what you don't know, do you, as a young person before you get started? So why would you know? the uh, nuances, the whys and wherefores around uh, particular, uh, you know, the expectations of you when you're applying for roles and how you present and so on. So that feels like a real key thing to do. Uh, I hope you guys uh, get to build on that because it is such a fantastic piece of work, particularly as you're prioritising these young uh, care leavers into work because the correlation between their employment success and their life success is really, really, really key, isn't it? Um, going forward, I can see that really it is fantastic work. And the other thing that was of interest to me, as you said at the very end, is in terms of your work with um, the prison. And I know it's in its infancy, but I'd like to watch and see how that uh, progresses over time uh, with you guys. That is another key area, I think, in terms of changing the dynamic in terms of uh, bringing uh, those uh, ex-offenders back into the workplace uh, and also, you know, working with those services in terms of recruiting to those skill shortage areas as well. Uh, would you like to share a little bit more about what your expectation, aspirations around that going forward? So, um, during COVID and, and um I'll, I'll ask for forgiveness because I may get some of the facts facts wrong. So I wasn't with Buckinghamshire during COVID. Um, we had quite a degree of sex, success with a kickstart, our kickstart program uh, using, which was a bit easier because there was kind of quite a nice chunk of money that came with it to fund um, employment costs. But some of the learning that we got from that in terms of how much people who've been out of, people who've been out of the workplace for quite a period of time, how much um, support they need to get back into that routine of that routine of work. Um, we've used to underpin that to underpin that program. So our aspirations are our aspirations are quite high in terms of numbers. We've got five we've got five in placement at the moment. We'll see how that runs in terms of 
retaining. I, I think there's quite a high there's quite a high input. However, um, as you point out, Pam, I think the 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 wider societal benefit in terms of having those people in having any of us in productive work has got to be a, has got to be a benefit. And we're we're absolutely blessed with um, a man, we're working with one, we're concentrating in one service area and the manager that's involved in that is so committed. So we had a bit of a false start with it. We had three, we had three people due to start and for all sorts of different reasons, they weren't released on license or something happened, but he stuck with the program. So he stuck with it as a way to solve, he can see the benefit of um, solving his problem that he's got that is really difficult in terms of the areas. It's in our it's in our waste area, which is not the easiest place to fill fill roles. And um, I think he's he's in for the long he's in for the long game. So that my you know my insight would be get a, get someone like that on board a champion because they just work alongside you and you're not convincing you're not dragging somebody along unwillingly. You've got them confidently coming with you. That's fantastic. I think I am going to bend your ear a little bit more around that initiative um, and see if I can uh, glean some more insight for some work that we'd like to do in Essex on that. I think it's fantastic what you're doing. I really like to uh, find out a little bit more myself. So I'm going to put myself on the list of names of people <laughs> that want you to contact. Um, I've got a little sneaky um, question come in here from Claudia McKellen, who's one of the Essex team. So I'll just point that out. Uh, yeah. She's one of the Essex team. But she says, amazing work, Sarah. Have you done anything similar for disabled candidates around employability and skills? So, Claudia, I can't ask that question, but I'm going to get Emma to connect with you so that we can, do, we can have that dialogue. So in terms of a specific scheme, there is not something that immediately comes to the mind, which Emma will be immediately typing to me saying, yes, there is, there's this. But I'm going to connect to you with Emma, if that's OK. Um, and we can share anything that we have been. And if not, we could probably learn from you guys as well in terms of a conversation. Um, we have a very, um, we have a, a number of staff networks, as you would expect in, in Buckinghamshire, one of which does um, work with colleagues with disability. So um, we can we can have a conversation about that afterwards if that's helpful no no wonderful um, anything that we can share and and learn from yourselves is uh, all good and i think across the piece of those who are on the call if any of you have got any other initiatives that you are working on similarly let's share them let's not keep them to ourselves yeah. really fantastic so we're coming to the end of our our half hour i just wanted to say very uh, well done um for and congratulations for your uh win at the ppma excellence awards it was uh, a well deserved when we can see that from all the hard work that you and your team were putting in and that passion actually does shine through i can assure you it does actually shine through such good work uh, and thank you so much for taking the time pulling the presentation together and sharing it with us um, uh, those of you uh, who are on the call, your names will be put forward to uh, Sarah. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to uh, ask. Um, uh, we will try and get all your questions to Sarah. If you think you. about these questions after the event, we'll get them to you and I'm sure they will respond. Um, and just before I go, just to uh, say that we have another webinar. Uh, that's, uh, I think it's on Monday, out of the same series of those that have been as part of this Excellence Awards webinar series. It's on Monday uh, and it's the Royal Borough of Kingston um, that are going to be sharing their uh, experiences and their entry on, if I've got this right, I hope Grace is going to say I've got this wrong, it is on the employee experience, not the employee experience, the uh, employer brand uh, this time around. So it's connected to the session we've just had. Um, and we hope if you've not yet registered for that uh, on employer brand, please do, it's on Monday. Thank you everyone for your time. Have a lovely uh, rest of the day. It's the sun is shining, make use of it. <laughs> um, and see you at the next session. Thank you again, Sarah, Emma and Lorna. Pleasure, thank you.